our to topic is entitled The Anxiety Trap. The Anxiety Trap. Now, why is it so important that the Lord Jesus has to say this to the disciples who are gathered there on the Sermon on the Mount? Because uh, the makeup of God's children uh, is such that we are very fearful. We are very fearful. On our own, there are many things that we are afraid of. And this fearsome uh, mentality often is passed on uh, from one person to another person to another person and the whole uh, group becomes fearful. And therefore, the people of God uh, needs to be, in the sense, uh, directed right, to God and His ways so that we would exercise faith and depart uh, from a fearsome countenance. Right? Why is it so important that we, uh, we not will worry well because of the weariness of worrying and yet you would find that in the life of the people of god uh, you you would see uh, that this has often been a very common thing anxiety how anxiety uh, takes hold of a, a man's heart so much so that the person is incapacitated. The man is incapacitated to do the things of God, the will of God. So he addresses the weariness of worrying. Uh, when there is not enough food on the table for each meal, well, sometimes, you know, uh, when we have too much also, uh, we get worried, right? Why does the person with too much gets worried because he's afraid that someone would come and take away the abundance that he has. So he's worrying, make sure that, you know, I have enough security cameras, I have make sure that I have enough uh, uh, alarms that are set, right, in order to protect those things that are precious to us. And so the Lord um, had to put these words to his people so that uh, worry, right? worry uh, will not uh, pull us apart from resting on God's provision. Now, what is the reason why the people of God worry? It's when we are not resting upon the provision of God. You see, when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, He, he has already prepared a very wonderful place for them. When God let them, let the Israelites out of Egypt, God already provided right, all that they needed. Right, what did uh, God said to the Egyptians or the, the Israelites before they left uh, the Egypt? They said, go and borrow from the Egyptians. And what did they get from the Egyptians? Gold, silver, everything that they needed. What did God instruct them to do? Take from them. Why? Well, because that is where the, these are the provisions by which they will build the tabernacle. So if you have God with us, right, you'll find that you have no lack. You see, before you come to a need that you have, God already thinks for you. What is it that you need? And therefore, if you have God with you, then you realize that you know, your soul is very restful. Your heart is very restful. There is no that kind of a servile fear. There is not that kind of a unrest in the heart. And why is it so important that the people of God must take time to study the Word of God? Right? Those who refuse to study the Word of God, right? those who don't want to attend class, you find that they are the most anxious people. Why? Because the word of God is not resting in the heart. 
And if, you, if we were to refuse God's word in our hearts, that's where we would have a lot of fear in our own heart. And you can see it in the behaviour. Right? Very fearful, very afraid. And how do you treat this? Well, you know, if it's not arrested in the butt, it is not taken care, if it's not arrested, then you would find that the fearful mentality, a very carnal, worldly mentality, was spread amongst the people of God. And then there would be a lot of uh, unrest amongst the people of God. It's so simple, so subtle, isn't it? Yeah. But the impact, the, uh, the, the effect is so great. And therefore, the people of God need to take time, you know, to study the Word of God. Take time to know. So what did the, the Word of God says? Through our Lord Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Right, here he tells us that there, <clears throat> these are the literally the worries, the anxieties, and distractions of this present life that hold captive the hearts and minds of the hearers to the extent that there is no room for God in their lives. No room to consider, ponder and receive, to give priority to the things that are eternal. That is why we are very concerned. We are concerned because we need to ensure right, that you know, the people of God move in the correct direction, right? We said evangelism 2020. Right? We have to ensure that we are moving in that direction. If there's anyone that is moving the people back to Egypt, wow, that is totally unacceptable. Right? We cannot, we cannot, because the people of God when they go back to their idolatry, they go back to their fears. And it's very frightening. It will surface up in their personal lives. It will surface up in the lives of their families. And it's so frightening. And that is why, you know, we have to lovingly encourage the people of God not to skip class. If you skip class and you, you know, think that you are able to handle, uh, well, you realise that before long, trouble comes. And it's sad. Why is it that the people of God don't learn their lessons and they have to go through cycle and after cycle, you know, of cycle, you know, it's a, like the book of Judges, right? It's a book of judges. A life is like a yo-yo, never stable, never stable. The Lord doesn't want us to live that way. And living that way uh, becomes very, uh, you know, in Hokkien we say very chuan, uh, very tired, you know, very worrisome. Why? Because that kind of a life you'll find you can't sustain. You need to have a life where, you know, we are focused upon uh, God and He's the centre of our life. Why? Because He is the one providing for all the things, you see. Things tick in our whole our life because of Him. So, why do we say, read the Bible in one year. Because if you read the Word, then you would be able to see the working of God in the lives of God's people, you see. And when you see it, then you learn it. Then you will learn the fear of God. We learn not to depart from God. Right? And that's so important. 
Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What our Lord is warning against is the danger of being distracted right, from fulfilling the will of God in our lives by being encumbered by care and anxiety about our earthly lives. So in this present life, right, you'd find right, that God wants us. And you know there are many things that will come to us in this world. Right? Many trials that will come. Right? And you can see by the reaction, the response of a person to these trials, the spiritual condition and the spiritual state. And it's important that the people of God right, must move out of fear to a state of faith. And the Lord is warning us against the danger. Now, today we have this coronavirus. It seems to be so frightening, right? It's in the air and, you know, how can we be protected from it? Well, if you read the Word of God, you study the Word of God, what does the Word of God tell us? Right? We were going through. In our weekly, that the Lord gives to us the promise of His care for our lives care for our lives and therefore we need to trust him and we must not have uh, the kind of fear that causes us to do very inordinate uh, uh, the things that you know cause us to uh, do things that are out of order we cannot get a hold of ourselves anymore and so how can we uh, how can the Christian respond uh, uh, to the coronavirus outbreak? Well, may I say that the Lord is still on the throne. The Lord is still on the throne. It seems so scary. The world is frightened. But the people of God must seek to trust in His care during this time of need. God's people may not understand the ins and outs of the situation. Now, you, you may not be able to know what is going on. And, you know, following the development can cause you to become very tired. All right? Because you have news coming from all sources everywhere. And, you know, you, you, your, your emotions will fluctuate from the news that you will hear each day. Well, it's not that you don't want to know what is going on. But your life must be built upon a stability that you know, must not be impacted, uh, derailed by the news that comes before you. So here, we give to you Psalm 121. What does it tell us? That the people of God must look to the Lord, trust in Him. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. God's care and protection upon you is more than you can care. Now, when Israel went out of Egypt, God said to the people of Israel, don't go to the way of the Philistines. Why did God say to them, don't go to the way of the Philistines, but go by the way of the wilderness? Because the Lord said that lest 
you see war and you become afraid and you turn back. Right? They will see war. The Philistines are very wild, powerful, military people. All right? And so the Lord knows how much we can take, how much we are able to handle. And so the Lord says, go by the way of the wilderness. Right? But by the way of the wilderness is a longer way, but it's also a way without any provisions along the way, right? They came out after two, three days, no water, no food. But did God knew, know that? Well, God knew that. So that when they were out, God provided for them. Right? Water came out of the rock. Now, why did God show the people of Israel water coming out of the rock? Because He's telling them that He can provide for them. He's able. And they come to the water that was contaminated, poisonous, and God told Moses to take a, a branch and throw it in, and the water immediately sweetened. The poison went away. We have a God who cares thoroughly for us. And God wants us to have that faith to trust in Him. So let us take time to meditate upon God's promises of His care and protection over His people. He is with us and a very present help for His people during the time or this time of need. Right? Let us keep faith that He will preserve us from all evil. When God said that He will preserve us from all evil, it means that He will preserve us from all evil. And so the people of God have a heart that is very restful in Him. There's no... It's calm, you know, inside. There's not a restlessness. Because we know the will of God and we are willing to abide in the will of God. We are not willing to be clever. We don't want. In our own cleverness, we often fail. But the Lord wants us to abide in Him. So God's people is to trust in God's protection in the face of pestilence that may, they, that may be threatening their very lives. Right? This is very real for us today. Right? We, we need to put into practice what God's Word says. Right? So God's word tells us right, that he will not slumber nor sleep. Right? So the psalmist is saying that, you know, he's saying to you that he will not, right, in a great emotion, right, to tell you that no, he will not. He will surely help you. And then he will say, he tells you that he that keepeth thee shall neither slumber nor sleep. Then he's telling you that this is according to fact, according to truth. Right? God is powerful enough to help you. Okay? And so the Lord wants His people to look to Him, trust in Him. Right? Psalm 91, the Lord gives a very assuring uh, gave very assuring words, especially for our time. He says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge as my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the Snare of the fowler. What is the snare of the fowler? You know, the, you know, the, the bird is trapped by right, the hunter who sets a trap. The snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. Right? The noisome pestilence, the disease that comes to us where we cannot trace its origin. Right? It's somewhere there and you are afraid because you don't know he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust and his truth shall be thy shield 
and buckler. So the Lord wants you to know of a fact, of a truth that He is able to deliver you. He is able to take care of you. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy sight, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. The Lord is saying to us that His care for us is such right, that He will protect you. And the Lord wants us to exercise faith in His preservative power. Now, when Israel came out of Egypt, they had nothing. They were vulnerable. But in each step of the way, God directed them. God protected them. God said, go this way and go this way. Do you realize that when you commit your life to God, God helps you? So in the morning before you go out, do you pray? You ask, do you ask the Lord, Lord, I'm going out. Please protect me. I do not know what will behold me. Or do you go out right, without seeking the Lord and you just said, I go. Well, I listen to the news. I see what is it that I ought to do. And then I go. No. The Lord says to us that we are to, to seek Him. Seek Him first. So the Lord is saying to us that the people of God must be in tune with Him, right? not in tune with the news of the world. You'll find that the news of the world right, has to be read and understood in the light of the revelation of God in His Word. And so the Lord is saying to us that, well, these are the birth pangs that leads to the rise of the Antichrist kingdom, a world political figure that is to come. And before this, what will happen? You will have pestilence, you have earthquakes in diverse places, you will see well, all this happening with greater and greater frequency. And, you know, it's interesting that the text tells us uh, that God is, didn't say God is the one who sent all these things, you know. Pestilence. Uh, it says, and what else? Earthquakes. Mm. The birth pangs. Wars and rumours of war, right? True? Very true. All this happened. What is the purpose? Well, the Lord is saying to us well, that His kingdom must come. And at the end of Matthew chapter 24, what did the Lord say? This gospel must be preached to the ends of the earth. Then the, earth, the end will come. What? is that race there that is going on? Well, the race is this, right, that on the one hand, right, the evil one is seeking right, to consolidate its kingdom before Christ would come and destroy all of it. And there is this spiritual battle that is going on and you are seeing it displayed, outplayed all around you. And the Lord wants us to know, and the Lord wants us to see and understand His plan and know that we are living in these days and these things will come. But for the people of God, He will protect you. He will be with you. Even if you were to contract the disease, right? absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. You have no loss. The Lord wants us not to be captivated, not to be held captive 
by these fears. Right. And all this, anything that will cause us right, to derail us from our faith in God is sin. That derail us from trusting God. Fear is sin. God doesn't want us to live that way. And therefore, the people of God is saying to the people of God must not, must not uh, be instruments for the advancement of fear amongst His people. And we have to be very careful. We are not walking close to the Lord. We can become unlawful instruments. And we have to be very careful, very watchful, very prayerful. Why? Because the kingdom of God and His purpose must not be thwarted. And if the Lord allow us to see and know what is going on, then it is for us to take action. You know, that generation that usher in the Antichrist, if you can do something, and if you don't do anything, are you not culpable? Are you not partaker? And so the Lord is saying to us that we are living in that generation whereby our faith is going to count, you know. Your faith is going to count. And we must be watchful. That's why the people of God must be gathered, gathered for prayer meeting, gathered for the study of God's Word, if we are outside there, lingering, happy with our little clicks, we'll be in trouble. Because before long, you find that you'll be running a course that is against the will of God. And that is very frightening. Why? Because we will suffer loss, great loss. And the Lord doesn't want us to suffer loss. And that's why the Lord is saying to His people, let us be willing to follow, to submit to His will. Let us have God's fear in our hearts. Let us not become arrogant. Let us be such that we would be humble when we cannot be talked to anymore. It's frightening. It's sad. And so the Lord is saying here in this Psalm 91, right, the sequel of this Psalm from verse 8, how He provides us more assurance of His care for us. You see, we, we are very fearful creatures. And our faith doesn't increase just like that. We need assurance after assurance. And that is why you read, you see. What did the Lord say? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. How are you protected? Because you have made God your habitation, right? your refuge. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, you remember when God sent the plague to Egypt? There is always a distinction. The lies would come, the frogs would come, right? the darkness would come. But what happens in the Israelite camp? You don't see anything. Right? Nothing moves. Everything is at rest. Why is it so? Because God is saying to us that He is distinguishing. 
his people from the world. And the Lord wants us to be on his side. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come in thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So what, how will God protect you? Our text tells us he will send his angels to keep you in all your way. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, so you walk. Right? Uh, there are many, you know, you walk, anything you can just kick. Uh, wrongly, you kick against a stone, wow, you, broke your, you break your toes. Right? Very easy, right? We all have this experience. Uh, you, 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 you are not careful, you hit something, oh, oh no. It's a broken toe. Well, the Lord is saying to us that He's there to protect us, but we must seek Him. You see? He protects us, but we have a responsibility to follow Him. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. Now there's a distinction here that the psalmist made. Right. To the people of God who seek Him, follow Him, to love Him. So we said evangelism 2020. What must we do? Why is it so important? Why are those, why is it that there are those who reject? You are rejecting the will of God. God's purpose. And can we thrive? When we go against it, no, we cannot. So, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the people of God would take time to pray. They would take time to gather for prayer. And you would tell, you can tell also, right, a man who seek God. As the Lord lie nigh with them, you find that the Lord will also warn you of trouble to come. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. So God deliver who? Those who do His will. Right? Our text tells us in Matthew 6.34, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Is there any other way with God? Can Adam put himself out of the paradise that God made for him? Is there any habitable place outside the earth in the universe that Adam can escape to that he will feel comfortable with himself no other place right that's the best place Eden the paradise that God placed us so why do we choose to resist the will of God why can't we submit to it and be happy and be willing to follow it. Why is it that we, we have that, that rebellious streak in us? Should it not be quelled? Must it not be restrained? Well, God wants us to be restrained. Because the paradise that 
Adam and Eve was in was the best place, right? If they have not partaken of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right, they would have lived forever. They would enjoy the paradise. They would have lived. All the animals are for their enjoyment. You know, God asked them to name every, all the animals, right? Everything is for them. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a great promise that God gave. Would you be willing to rest upon all this assurance of God and, you know, serve in faith and behold the glory of God? May God's people take time to pray, seeking the Lord's protection daily over the attack of the virus in their going out and their coming in. And trust in the Lord, having committed our safekeeping in His hands through prayer. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The Lord says, let your requests be made known unto Him. By prayer and supplication. What's the meaning of the word supplication? In other words, specific prayer. Are you specific in your prayer? Do you articulate your fear before God? Do you articulate it? What is it that is bothering you? Do you tell it to the Lord? Can He not help you? Can Jesus not help you? Of course He can help you. The trouble is this, that you know, we are so frightened by our own fears, we, 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 we forgot to pray. We forgot to tell the Lord our need. But if we would do so, then would we live in fear? No, we will have peace. God's peace will be with us. Now, this is the promise of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds. Your heart, your mind. Your mind, you know, the mind uh, is a very vulnerable entity, you know. Right? You look at the IMH and its expansion. Why is it that there are so many people whose minds are bordered? Why is it like that? Well, because they have not got to keep their hearts and minds. You have got God to keep your hearts and minds. Then His peace will abide with you. His presence will be with you. He will take care of you. There is a difference, a vast difference, you know. And the Lord wants you to know. And He wants you to appropriate the goodness of God. The goodness of God, the abundant goodness of God. After we care, cast our care and anxiety on the Lord, after we stop worrying about everything imaginable, right? Your mind is very fertile. Okay? You will worry about everything imaginable. Right? And you become very stifled. Stifled as in. Well, you can't move forward anymore because you're so frightened. But after we speak to the Lord through prayer and supplication, that's the promise of God. With thanksgiving, don't forget to thank God you know, for answering your prayer, for giving you the peace. Uh, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. May the Lord enable His people to experience the promise of His abiding peace with us as we articulate our fears and desperate plights to Him through prayer. That's the weapon of the 
Believer, that's our weapon. Through prayer and through His Word. That is the spiritual sword for His Word. And by His Spirit. And the Lord wants us to be able to well this well, you see. Our text tells us, should we not look at the birds and watch how God cares for the birds? Should we not look at the plants and, and the flowers, the lilies of the field, how God takes care of them? Even the glory of Solomon, you know, Solomon is the most the richest, the most uh, glorious of all the kings of Israel. Right? You look at Solomon in his royalty, in his uh, pomp and in his arrogance. Right? Yeah. Our Lord says, cannot be compared. Right? Cannot be compared with a flower in the field. Right? You look at the flower. Wow, you look at the petal of the flower. So beautiful. You know, you look at the texture, look at the colour, you look at the shape, the formation. Then you compare what man make in his throne, right? Solomon going up his throne. Any comparison? No comparison. As, as I was mentioning, the insects, right? How... For us, we are packed right, by bones, then uh, sinews and flesh and muscles. But for the, <laughs> for the insect, it's the other way around. It's the bone. It's supporting its structure. How marvellous and wonderful. God create alternatives, you know. And how this alternative thrives in its environment. And God knows. And God wants us to take note, take heed right, of Creator, who He is, and function according to the way He would want His creation to function. And so, what did the, the Lord say to the, the people? Verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You think you take time to preach the gospel, you share the word with the people of God, that you would go into abject poverty, that God will not take care of you? Well, it's the opposite. You find that as you serve Him, the more you follow Him and walk with Him, you may suffer. But the Lord will sustain you in all your suffering. No, it's a different kind of a, a life. The presence of God with you. Right? Even when right, you are facing danger, you see the power of God protecting you, helping you. Therefore, take no thought for the moral. Right? We become anxious. Hey, what will be our, what will be next year, the year after? For the morrow shall take care of the things of itself. In other words, God will take care. It doesn't mean that you do not plan for your future, but you entrust your life to God. <laughs> you entrust your life to Him, and He will be your future. He is your inheritance. So, if you have what you need to do for today, do it. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That means, you know, for that day's work, you have that day's worry, you just fulfill that day's uh, responsibility. And then, when you, you know, reach your, your bed <laughs> to sleep, right, you fall down and that's it, <laughs> you'll sleep. Then the next day you wake up, 
ah, you know that, yeah, Lord, I have another new day that you have things for me to do. Right? There's no burden in the heart. In a sense that, you know, our burdens are cast upon the Lord and you know that God takes care of you and, you know, you have a merry spirit, happy, you know. You're happy. And the Lord wants us to live that kind of a happy life. It's a life of blessing. And, you know, may we say that we have not arrived yet. Right? But the Lord wants us to strive to walk even closer with Him, to follow Him even more intimately, to read our Bible even with an even more uh, uh, devotion and uh, prayer. You know? And you'll find the peace of God coming to you, the wisdom of God coming to you, the strength of God coming to you. So wonderful, so privileged, so blessed. May we um, enjoy Him forever. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Thank Thee for assurance out of Thy Holy Word that Thou wouldst has sticked Thyself to protect us. Thy only begotten Son, through the shedding of His blood, the breaking of His body, to win our eternal well-being. O oh Lord, we thank Thee that our eternal well-being is secured from all evil. Therefore, Lord, help us to rest in peace in Thee and grant to us the faith to walk with Thee, follow Thee. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.